elbow down, turn it on top. We're just warming up the shoulder. We're actually trying to bring some more fluid into the shoulder so that it's going to be cracking and popping less often. from Miami Spine and Performance. This is part four of In the Gym with Dr. Will. Uh, we've already covered uh, knees and lower body, shoulders and upper body, and the core. Now we're gonna cover pre and post workout. What should you be doing before and after your workout, right? Um, I know a lot of you guys like to jump right into your workout, or a lot of you feel like you need to warm up a lot, but you're just not sure what you should be doing. So in general, prior to exercising, what you wanna do is you wanna be doing more of an active mobility type movement, right? Something where you're moving your body through some new ranges of motion, you're improving blood flow, you're getting thing, things warmed up, and you wanna save the sort of long, static stretching type of things for after the workout as you're cooling down, okay? So I'm gonna take you guys through three of my most popular warm-ups that I do, and three of the most popular cool downs. And by popular, I mean the ones that I'm most often prescribing to my patients and to my training clients. So the number one exercise that I think needs to be mentioned um, it's called the world's greatest stretch. It's not, uh, it wasn't named that by me, but I have to agree that it's one of the greatest stretches in the world. Uh, with this exercise, we're gonna take a lunge position. We're gonna drop our elbow down, and we're gonna rotate and turn. And you can do a couple of repetitions on each side, just like this. And the reason why this exercise is often claimed as the world's greatest stretch is because you're really sort of stretching just about everything, and particularly the areas that need stretching, right? If you're sitting at a desk all day and the upper back is getting stiff, the hip flexors are getting stiff, the spine is getting stiff, so this is a way to really open up all those muscles that get tight during the day. So again, I'm gonna take my step, I'm gonna drop my hand, bring the elbow down, turn and rotate. Elbow down, turn and rotate. Elbow down, turn and rotate. All right, and this way we can get the groin stretched, we can get the hip flexor stretched, again, thoracic spine and shoulders. The next one that we're gonna go through is gonna be for the upper body. I often find that people have a hard time uh, warming up their shoulders before doing things like bench press and pull-ups and they, they hear a lot of crackling in the shoulders. I know some of you, if you do things like this, you hear popping and cracking. So we're just gonna go through some shoulder carbs, right? And if you are following my channel or if you're a patient of mine, uh, you know that I, I love shoulder carbs, okay? So for this exercise, we're just going to Rotate the shoulder through a full range of motion, just like so, all the way forward and all the way back. Okay, so I'm keeping my palm up. I'm rotating, rotating, rotating. And I'm reversing directions, just like so. One more time, all the way up, all the way back. Touch my palm to my hamstring. Then I'm going to reverse directions. I'm sorry, I'm going to switch arms. I'm going to take my shoulder and rotate. And trust me, you're going to hear some crackling, popping, uh, popping, popping, all kinds of things like that. Nothing to be worried about, right? We're just warming up the shoulder. We're actually trying to bring some more fluid into the shoulder so that it's going to be cracking and popping less often. Okay. So that's the second exercise of the three uh, three warm ups that I think you you can't go wrong if you do. The third one, uh, you guys might find surprising, but it's actually going to be a core exercise. It's gonna be the bird dog. So um, we have our world's greatest stretch where we kind of open up the hips and thoracic spine. We have the shoulder cars where we're gonna make sure that we get the shoulder moving to a full range of motion. Now we're gonna do the bird dog exercise. The reason why I like to do the bird dog prior to uh, doing a workout is, it's a great way to kind of prime the core, activate the glutes, activate the shoulder stabilizers. So no matter what type of exercise, or what type of routine you're doing, you're gonna kinda of get everything activated all at once, okay? So I'm gonna go down onto my hands and knees like so, okay? I'm going to flex and extend my spine until I find a nice neutral position where I feel like uh, my spine is flat and comfortable. And then I'm gonna slowly extend one arm and one leg by squeezing my glute and squeezing the muscles behind my shoulder. And then right and again, I'm gonna squeeze, reach, and I'm gonna go there. Notice how I'm not 
twisting my spine. I'm not turning myself and shifting. I'm staying super straight as far as holding and turning. Holding. More. Hold. So that's the burn dog exercise. As you can see, we're activating some of the muscles that tend to get inhibited throughout the day. The muscles of the shoulder blades, the muscles behind the shoulders, as well as the glutes and hamstrings, right? Since we're sitting on our tush all day, and we're sitting on these muscles, they tend to get a little bit inhibited and they don't work as well. We wanna make sure when we're going into a workout that these muscles are firing and ready to go, okay? So those are the three exercises. If you're only gonna pick three exercises to warm up with, regardless of the type of workout that you're gonna do, world's greatest, shoulder cars and bird dog are I think three of the best options that you can have. Now we're gonna go through a couple of post-workout cool down stretches. So we're gonna focus on stretching the quads, stretching the hip rotators and stretching the lats, okay? I'm gonna show you guys how I like to stretch the quads here using a couch stretch, okay? So all you need is a bench like this. I'm gonna set my back foot on the bench and bring my knee all the way down like so and I'm gonna lean back towards my heel, keeping my torso upright, okay? So this probably looks a lot like the, uh, the bottom position of the rear foot elevated split squat, except now we're gonna bias shifting our hip forward and stretching this downside quad. So you should feel a really good pull all the way from sort of the front of the hip to the top of the kneecap. As you're sitting in this position, shoulder blades are back, nice and tall here. We'll do the other side. Again, kind of get into that rear foot elevated split squat position. Standing nice and tall. Ideally, we want our thigh to be vertical, but if you're a little more tight, you can lean forward. The more back you lean, the more you're gonna get quad, and the more forward you lean, the more you're gonna get hip flexible, okay? And I'd recommend that you hang out there for at least 60 seconds uh, per side. The second one that we're gonna do is gonna be the elevated pigeon stretch. And we can actually get very creative here with this bench the bench up into an incline, like so, and get a really good stretch of the hip rotator. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your shin, bring it across the bench like so, and you're going to sit down onto your hip just like this. If you're doing this stretch properly, you should feel kind of your whole butt and the outside of your thigh stretching as you kind of lean from side to side. You can also fall over your thigh a little bit and get a little bit more of a stretch into the groin, or you can shift your leg up more than 90 degrees, and you can get more of a deeper stretch sort of in the outside of the groin. Okay? We'll switch to the other side. Rotate like so. Again, sit up nice and tall if you want to hit more of the hip rotators. If you want to get more of the glutes and the groin, we're going forward. And we're going to hang out here for 60 seconds. Especially after a lower body workout, if your back is feeling a little bit tight, this is where we're going to loosen that. The final stretch we're going to need to cool down is going to be for the lats. Obviously, if we're doing any back movements, any overhead pressing, any rear delt movements, we're going to be taxing the lats a little bit. So we want to make sure we get a good stretch. My favorite way to do that is grab a cable machine or any pole. Lean yourself forward and step your leg back so we can stretch the entire chain all the way from the hand to the toe, just like this. Take deep breaths here, in and out. Just stretch this entire lateral leg. And we'll switch sides. We want to drop our head through the middle here, get a really, really nice stretch. And open up our hips, drop our foot back. Bonus exercise, if you want to get some spine decompression, I like to do just a passive hang here. Now it might be difficult from a grip standpoint for some of you to actually just hang. So what I like to do is I like to just sit down and just kind of let my spine unhinge a little bit, right? Rocking side to side, shifting in circles. But this way I can really loosen up my shoulder girdle, I can loosen up my tailbone, I can loosen up my upper and lower back. I can, I can just kind of like let my hips drop side to side and we can hang out here for 60 seconds as well. Okay guys? So those are just a couple ideas of some warm-up exercises. As a general rule, I recommend that you do at least three mobility exercises prior to your workout 
Usually you want to do something that's related to the actual training that you're doing, right? So if you're doing lower body, maybe work more hips. Um, and then as a cool down, you want to pick at least three static stretches, hold them anywhere from 45 to 60 seconds, and maybe do two rounds of that um, as part of your workout. So just make sure, especially those of you, if your goal is to be well-rounded and healthy and injury-free, if you have uh, an hour to work out, you want to incorporate, you know, five to 10 minutes at the beginning, five to 10 minutes at the end, to make sure that you get this done. It's really, really easy when you're in a rush to skip the warm up or skip the cool down, but ultimately that really adds up. So if you're structuring a workout, you know, you want the warm up and cool down to be making up about a quarter of that workout. And then the other three quarters is you know, your strength training or your cardiovascular training, your intervals or, or whatever it is. So it's really important to do the pre and post work. It's one of those things that pays big, big dividends down the road and your body's gonna thank you for it later. So. I hope you guys enjoyed In the Gym with Dr. Will Part 4, where we go through mobility exercises. Um, the next series that we're gonna work on, I'm super, super excited about. We're gonna talk about nutrition, so we're gonna get in the kitchen with Dr. Will. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about uh, how I structure my meals and how I help clients improve their nutrition and their meal planning, um, electrolytes and uh, easy snacks on the go and things like that, because that's something you guys have been asking for. So um, this will be kind of for this month and the month of September, we're gonna be focusing on nutrition. So uh, please uh, drop a like, comment, or subscribe, and let me know what you guys wanna see uh, throughout the rest of the fall. And uh, again, thanks for watching.